While the U.S. Federal Reserve is expected to hold rates on Wednesday's decision, it may be a while before they begin to come down from current levels. And amid those higher rates, we're also beginning to see signs of potential slowing growth ahead for the global economy. So what does this all mean for commodity prices in 2024? Joining us now to discuss is Daniel Galley, the Senior Commodity Strategist with TD Securities. Daniel, thanks for coming to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Okay, so Daniel, you feel that commodity prices are still supported amid high interest rates and slowing economic growth. Uh, walk us through your thinking. Yeah, well, right, if you think about it, commodity prices over the last year are basically unchanged, right? We're talking about oil prices, despite the fact that they've just been selling off aggressively, are still relatively unchanged on a year-on-year -year basis. The same is true for the base metals complex, right? All of these commodities are very highly sensitive to global economic growth. Right? This time last year, the world was thinking that a recession was fairly imminent. That still didn't pan out. You had China's reopening. You had all these bullish factors um, that were since unwound. And in fact, if you look at the situation in China, they've just been facing a downward spiral in the real estate sector, which is one of the most commodity intensive consuming industries in the world. Yet prices are basically unchanged. So despite the fact that we're in a high interest rate environment, that gro global growth is slowing, commodity prices have actually shown an incredible amount of resilience here. And that actually is a structural supply story which I think is important to uh, be able to see the forest from the trees. Okay, so given that backdrop, how do the short-term challenges for the overall space stack up against the long-term potential? So, firstly, I'd say commodity prices are very cyclical in nature, right? They behave in cycles by the nature of um, the, the asset class, really. There's two cycles within that, right? One is the business cycle, which tends to impact all asset classes. And the other one is um, a term that is typically referred to as a commodity super cycle, right? That's so what does that mean? Well, that refers to periods of time when you're in a structural imbalance in the market, where you're structurally in a deficit of a certain commodity or in a surplus of that certain commodity, which tends to um, reflect global incentives to invest in supply or uh, the, la the last super cycle reflected China's entry into the World Trade Organization and the tremendous growth in their commodity appetite that came from that. These are very long-term structural trends that impact uh, commodities markets. Right now, we're actually at a very interesting point as we see the business cycle is on the decline. And in fact, 2024 might be the trough of the business cycle. Whereas we're on um, the beginning of a commodity super cycle in which the world has structurally in underinvested in commodity supply for the last decade. And we do see a supply cliff on the horizon, which necessitates higher commodity prices um, in the future. Okay, so uh, now I want to talk a little bit about interest rates because we've got the Fed coming up this week. Um, when we start to see the Fed pivot to more dev dovish stance, what do you think will that, that will mean for commodities going forward? Well, typically, a dovish stance from the Federal Reserve is very bullish for commodities. Firstly, it um, relates to global demand growth, right? So uh, lower interest rates tend to stimulate demand in the future. But secondly, and this is particularly relevant in this case where we've had the most aggressive Fed tightening cycle on record, uh, the cost of carry of holding these commodities for speculators or for commodity merchants that, out there that actually hold physical inventories is extremely elevated. Right, your trade-off here is, if you're a money manager, is to buy you know, a cash-like product that is yielding a very high rate of return versus paying to store and to finance that storage of uh, um, a commodity. It's a very you know, tough bargain. Um, and despite, the fact, despite that fact, commodity prices have still been resilient. So once again, showing the, the beginning of the super cycle having an impact on prices. Okay, now you talked about China. Um, what about the outlook for their commodity demand? Uh, and do you expect government stimulus to boost their appetite for commodities next year? Yes, we do. Um, over the last year, we've, been, um, we've taken a cautionary tone thinking about the fact that China's stimulus has been very targeted in nature. It hasn't been the type of broad-based stimulus that they've deployed in the past. They're wary of um, the debt trap that that kind of stimulus has created in the past, and they've been looking for ways to avoid it. That being said, increasingly there is pressure on the central government to deploy um, fiscal stimulus package to help to provide at least a floor for the economy, which seems to be in a downward spiral due to um, the 
real estate intensity that they have in their economy. So uh, saving the real estate sector from that downward spiral is key to the central government and increasingly you're starting to see signs that they're putting that in place. I will say this as well, the targeted stimulus that they have deployed over the last year has actually been very commodity intensive, far more than we initially anticipated. Right? Well, if we're talking about the real estate sector, they focused on completing projects that is actually very copper and aluminum intensive. Uh, the completion stage tends to consume a lot more of that than the beginning stages of construction. Uh, so even the traditional sectors there had received some support from Chinese stimulus, but increasingly the targeted nature of their stimulus has focused on new energy sectors, right? Solar power generation has this, far... This transition to clean energy. Absolutely, right. The, that energy transition in China, China is really leading the way on that. And um, the amount of solar power generation that uh, they've built up in terms of capacity over the last year has far beaten even their lofty uh, central government targets for 2023. And we expect that that's gonna continue to remain, notwithstanding um, the fact that electric vehicles are actually probably the biggest and most important um, um, sector that they're leaning on. <laughs>